questions, but uh, we are ready to rock and roll as agents helping agents. And we have a special guest coach on today. Tom, why don't you lead this off, sir? Oh, thanks, George. Um, what am I leading off? By the way, I didn't hear you. Introduction of Curtis. <laughs> I just woke up. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> It's not no, true. You and I were talking at 6.30 this morning, uh, planning yeah, the day. No. Hey, guys, uh, welcome to the call this morning. If you're not with the XP, welcome. You got some great stuff happening today. Um, Coach Curtis has uh, been very um, grateful. I'm grateful for him to actually have him participate in doing some of our calls along with uh, Coach Debbie. They bring some amazing value. Guys, uh, Curtis coaches $100 million teams out there. You need to listen to what he's got to say. So there's, there's some great things that happen on these calls. People talk about some amazing things. <clears throat> we take notes and then they go away. Um, take a note, take action, and then implement, and hopefully you'll get the results that you, uh, that you deserve. <clears throat> so I'm going to introduce Curtis. I appreciate you coming on the call, Curtis. Curtis is going to share some great things during the holiday season to help you grow your business. Uh, take some notes. But, well, good morning, my friend. Hey, good morning. How are you? Just getting out. You do go on mute. I asked the question. No. <laughs> great. Glad you're here, Curtis. Hey, no, thanks for having me. Hey, listen, I, I'd like to really make this about uh, about you guys and, and to actually have a mastermind around it. And I'll tell you what happened. So. Tiffany reached out to me a couple of weeks back and she says, hey, listen, would you, you know, want to come on our Wednesday 30 a.m.? And, um, you know, if you did, what would you want to talk about? And quite honestly, I wasn't sure. And a couple of weeks went by and I don't know about you guys, but it's business planning time. And so I did some business planning with both of my real estate teams, as well as mortgage company um, and then another group. And part of that business planning, what we did was we went back and we analyzed what did our business look like over this past year and even um, the year prior to. And we actually broke it down. I mean, got really granular with it. So, you know, what I mean by that is, so for instance, um, I asked them to take each of the clients that they did deals with this past year and tell me where did that deal come from? So for instance, you know, did it come from Zillow? Okay, great, Zillow. Did it come from my sphere of influence? And oh, by the way, if it came from my sphere of influence, was it a referral from my sphere of influence? Was it somebody in my sphere of influence, right? So really, really, really granular with it. And this is what we found. We found with most of the real estate agents, and these are agents that are selling 30, 40 houses a month on these teams, or it's not a month, but a year uh, on these teams. And here's what we found. Most of them did somewhere between eight, nine, 10 deals that had come out of their sphere and really came out of their database and some of it. And so what they'd say is, well, that was a referral from some in my database. And so after we broke all of this stuff down, I asked the question, what did you do to get that deal? And here's what I found. They didn't do anything. In other words, they weren't contacting their database. They weren't, um, these folks weren't really on any kind of a, a you know consistent or steady drip plan of any kind. They weren't mailing them anything, no happy birthdays or anniversaries or nothing, nothing. Now, did they do something to get it? Sure, they did an amazing job somewhere along the way. And these people thought enough of them to go ahead and send them business. And, and that's great. I think that's amazing. But what would it have looked like this past year, had you actually had a system or had a plan and did something with it? And so then what are you going to do going forward? So would that have been instead of 10 deals, could that have been 20 deals? Maybe so. Maybe so. It could have been more, maybe. Um, and then what will it look like going forward? Because look, you, you guys see it, right? The landscape's changing, right? The, the game's the same, but the landscape's changing. And so we've got to get to different. And so I know We've all, all talked about 
this thing, the database in the past, and we've harped on it and we did the thing and so on and so forth. And sometimes we get into action with it a little bit enough that we, um, you know, get some business and stuff like that going. Um, but I don't know that we really have this amazing strategy and or plan around it um, to build a real estate business. And so anyway, with that in mind, that's what I wanted to talk about today. And what a better time to connect with our database than the holidays. Like we got like all kinds of reasons to call them at this point and all kinds of reasons to celebrate our sphere and our database and get into action with them. Well, and, and build that business, you know, going forward. You know, maybe we don't get a deal today, um, but what an amazing time to then get back into relationship with them so that next year we can set ourselves up for success and we can have the conversations about, hey, do you know anybody that might be looking to sell? Hey, what's your three, four, five year strategy in the home market? You know, are you thinking about selling, you know, has it crossed your, you know, all the things, right? Like, I don't have to tell you that part, but all the things, but what an amazing time right now to do the things to get back into relationship with them um, because we have the holidays and all the things uh, to talk about. So I really wanted to, you know, there's a million amazing ideas out there. And so what I, you know, with that being said, and I would imagine that if you all, all went through that exercise that we went through in business planning, you would probably find the same. And I think we have to look in the mirror and ask ourselves, you know, did we do all the things, right, to, to generate this business or could it have been better? And so here we are today. And I figured, hey, let's mastermind about what we could, what are some of the amazing things or, or ideas can we come up with to then do this going forward, right? And build the momentum going into the new year that we know that we can, we can build because what you do today, right, shows up in 30, 60 days. Well, that's January. It's around the corner. And rather than say, well, January is our slow time. We're just getting into season. It's coming down off the holidays. Rather than say that, why don't we say, holy crap, I had the most amazing January and start out ahead of the game rather than in the hole when it comes to meeting our goals. Anyway, Tom, do you have anything on there? That's where I'm at. So, so what you said, um, Curtis, and what I heard was when you're doing your business planning at, at, at the end of the year, like they should be doing it now. Matter of fact, I've been doing business planning classes for the last two months. Um, many have attended, some attended by in person, some attended online. Um, I actually got to review some uh, yesterday with some of the individuals on the call. So when you're analyzing your business for this year, going into next year, it's so critical and important because what, what Curtis is really doing is he's narrowing down, all right, where is it coming from? Is it coming from Zillow? Is it my referral? Is it referral-based database? Sphere of influence, realtor.com, wherever it is. And then we talk about the process elimination, expenses, right? What expense are we going to eliminate moving forward into next year? Because when you do your business plan and you actually diagnose where your business came from, you can actually prepare for next year by eliminating that expense. If it's not bringing you 10 to one value, get rid of it, right? So if you're paying $1,000 and you're not earning $10,000 from that, get rid of it, right? So um, one of the things also that I really liked that you mentioned was when you go back and look at where all your clients came from, what better way or what better time of the year than to send, call, or touch every single one of them? You know, um, hey, I just wanted to give you a call, say thank you for the opportunity of represent, representing you this year, um, any special plans for the holidays, whatever it is, general conversation, send them a card, send them uh, something of value, S whatever it may be. Do, if you're doing client appreciation parties, this is huge because right now client appreciation parties for based on what the sales that you did this year, have your lender and title company pay for it and tell them, hey, Tom Martin said you guys should be helping me pay for this. Right, Claire? Right? So client appreciation parties, all that stuff there. Um, and I don't want to take up more of that, Curtis, but that's what I heard. 
diagnose where the business came from. And now I'm confident that will lead into, uh, you know, looking at the expenses. What, what am I going to eliminate? Well, I, you know, it's, it's eye opening, right? And, you know, as, as real estate agents, we try to do all the things and we don't have to do all the things like we just, we just don't. And, um, you know, getting granular with it and then, you know, sort of self-discovering like, you know, what could I do better? What can I do different? Look, I had the same conversation with the loan originators that, that, um, that I, you know, coach and, and work with. And, you know, they had lots of ahas about, wow, I'm spending time in places and doing things that probably shouldn't be doing. But we talk about database and, you know, one of the things, so I went to a ferry event and he of course talked about it. And then I've been reading and talking about other things. And I don't know if you guys have seen um, uh, Steve Murray, um, you know, with Real Trends talking about valuing agents, businesses, and real estate teams, and so on and so forth going forward. And, and you know, most of that value is in, not most, yeah, probably the majority, is in database. And so recently, and I'm not saying go by this, but so I think we all think we have these amazing databases. And yet, you know, I was having another conversation with somebody and I says, well, they, they said they want to step out of business. And they says, well, you can sell your database. Well, they didn't have this system of that was duplicatable. So it really wasn't while they had this database and it was, you know, had a lot of people in it and so on and so forth. They didn't have a system that they were doing with this database to make it duplicatable. Therefore, it wasn't worth what they really thought it was. And so anyway, there's a book that I just recently got called The Golden Handoff. And that's actually what they talk about. I don't know if you've ever read it, seen it, heard it, whatever. Um, but it's talking about building that business around the database. So anyway, that that's where I'm at. And that's been my conversation going forward. And then, you know, once we get this amazing database going, what are the things we can add to it? And what are the things, you know, the other things we'll continue to do, right? Um, that's how we win. That's how we survive in this market. That's how we make a ton of money. And then that's our exit strategy too. That's our exit strategy too. You know, that's the opportunity to get out tomorrow and say, well, listen, I've got this amazing database here. Come buy it. And you get two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars, whatever the return was from it. So anyway, that's that's where I'm at with database. And so, like I said, what a perfect time to to have the conversation around it, um, which is the holidays. Right. And so what are some of the ideas that you guys might have as far as what can we do Um to get back into relationship with them. I mean, we can say, yeah, let's call them. Um, but what are some of the cool ideas that you might have um, to, to do with them for the next, you know, whatever we got, month and a half, right? Yeah. So so um, that book, by the way, is an amazing yeah. book, The Golden Handoff. Um, I mention it all the time. Guys, here's the thing too. Um, if your database doesn't have agents in it, from around the country, you got to build that part too, because so many referrals uh, are, are a big part of our business. It should be anywhere from 10 to 20% of your business. And if it's not, how do you build that? Start calling agents, right? And saying, hey, I'd love to be a referral partner. So that's another great way. Or the, the people that you've worked with this year, ask them, who have you worked with in the past that I should be calling? Maybe not in this area. Right? Maybe they're from Boston. Maybe they're from California. Touch base with that agent. Um, it gives you another reason to touch base with them. So as you go into the holiday season, what are you doing to take every opportunity to um, deliver value? Hey, it, it, this is something I, I seen this. Um, so I we, we get our Christmas tree every year from the same place and they always cut about this much off the bottom of the tree, right? They cut like this much off the bottom of the tree and they just put it aside. Well, what was happening was they had all these little discs of pieces of wood that were cut off. So somebody started collecting them, right? And they started making little things on them and decorating them and everything else and giving them away as uh, Christmas ornaments. Or they would put a picture of their family on it and it'd be a Christmas ornament, right? So what cool ideas are you thinking about that you can go back to your client base for the rest of the year and give them something, maybe a reef, maybe whatever it is. Take a picture from Facebook, put it on that little disc there, you drill a hole in it. Look at me like I got two fucking heads. You do have two heads. Sorry. 
<laughs> Road rage. No, I don't know. <laughs> That's Daryl. <laughs> wow. Does he have two heads? By the way. Um, so so think of something creative, right? Look at stock their Facebook. Look at the, what they've gone through for the rest of the year and how are you going to touch them, right? Um, a friend of mine sent out birthday uh what was it? What did she said? Uh, she sent out a bunch of birthday cards in December instead of Christmas cards and forgot that they were birthday cards and not Christmas cards. Right? So she got a huge response. And the response was, here's, here's how she did. She, she goes, I'm, I'm glad I was early. I'm glad I was early. It was a mistake, but she, she actually benefited from that mistake. People contact her. Thank you for the birthday card. She goes, oh my gosh. It was really supposed to be a Christmas card, but maybe I'm early, <laughs> right? <laughs> so at least get out there and touch them. So uh, Curtis, what I hear you say is get to the business planning, diagnose where the, uh, the, the sales have come from, touch them. And if they're from referrals, touch the referral and uh, really diagnose that and, and really. Well, them. you know, what we found was, you know, we, we didn't know, right? Uh, you know, a lot of people didn't know. They're just like, oh, that was a referral. But when you get real granular and really kind of, kind of like figure it out, right? Um, it came down to, you know, sphere of influence and database and all the things. And, and that was the question, well, what's your system? What's your plan around that? What, what are you doing to generate that? And they're like, well, I really didn't do anything. It, meaning they didn't call them and they hadn't asked for the referrals and they aren't, like I said, on any, you know, big, you know, drip campaign and holiday cards and all the things. And so they weren't doing any of that. And I was like, well, gosh, what if you did? What if you did? Then what would it look like? Because this market, look, you got two choices. And this is when I was talking to them. You can continue. And we're not going to stop taking our internet leads and online leads and all that stuff we generate. But gosh, are we, are we not, you know, competing in this market? You know, it's tough, right? Like we're getting, you know, it's the multiple offers and the this and the people coming in from out of town. Like there's all these things. And of course, with our database, it's it's different, right? It's there's less sales to it. We just got to find them the house. Maybe they want a list, you know, so on and so forth. The other thing that we noticed was most of the sellers, if not all of the sellers that we received um, on all these teams was all through database and sphere and stuff like that, right? So if you want listings, it's all, all in your database and sphere. You can go to the MLS. You can say, well, I'm going to get the expireds. But the deal is, is how many expireds are there? There's like two, maybe, right? Um, you know, so the, the listings are, are in your database, right? In addition to the circle prospecting and the farming, but primarily your database. And we're talking about your past clients, your sphere, right? And, of course, the current clients, Um that you do business with. George Philbeck raised his hand. That's funny. All you gotta do is pop in, buddy. Well, I figured I would let you, uh, I'd let you run through it and, and carry on with what you're doing. I want to interrupt the train of thought, but I, I've got to add this because I, I'm just, I'm so passionate about it. And I hope you guys get this as well. This is the time of year where you can pick up your email address. You can pick up an address. The conversations that we're currently having with our people, because I'm as guilty as everybody else, uh, I don't do what I should do on a regular basis, and I'm doing my darndest to correct it, but I'm going to try and do it a little bit differently. So y'all focus on this and see if this is something that resonates with you. I'm making the call and taking the ownership because I'm looking for a deeper relationship because I promise you relationships will always win. They'll beat Zillow, they'll beat Open Door and everything else. And nobody will work with somebody unless they know you actually care. A lot of my conversations are go like this. So Curtis, if it were with you, say, hey, Curtis, and if I don't get him on the phone, I'll actually leave a voicemail just like this and then send him a text. I left you a voicemail. It's kind of personal and important. And that's enough. And he'll look at it. I guarantee he will. But it would go something like this if, if I didn't get him on the phone. Hey, Curtis, it's George Philbeck. I just, you know, it's holiday season. It's Thanksgiving coming up and, and what we're grateful for. And I'm grateful for you. And I also, I think I owe you an apology. I have not been in touch as much as I should. I was so busy with work and I forgot what really matters. And that's friendship. That's people that you respect and like. Uh, also, I'm committed to holiday cards. I promise I'm going to do it. Can you do me a favor when you get this? Shoot me a text with your address. I want to make sure I put something in the mail to you. And I want to make sure that I get to honor you and our friendship. So anyway, that's it. Hope you're having a great day. Give me a call back if you want to. Love Every it. single one of us has opportunities to do this with people that we're in relationship with. And those relationships 
are more powerful than anything else. As Curtis had said, as Tom and I talk about on a regular basis, as I think you all know, and this is a great opportunity to do so. And you can have that same conversation in December. Call to wish you a happy holidays and make sure you send them a card. Now, here's your triple opportunity. The phone call, of course, if they get them on the phone, that's what you're going to say. And it's all about them after you make your apology, if you haven't been on point. If you have been on point, then by all means, carry on. I just wanted to wish you a happy holidays. And, and I'm, I'm going through gratitude and, and you came up kind of thing. The idea is how can you be interested in them? How can you create a deeper relationship? Now, after that conversation, if it's a great one, write them a handwritten note. Write them a thank you note. I hope all of you have your cards already stamped and ready to go. So all you have to do is write them. And so, you know what? It was great talking to you because that note's huge. Next month, send them the Christmas card or the holiday card or whatever your faith may be. Send them something that cheers them on and make another phone call. You're already two of 12 monthly phone calls in. You'll be amazed at how they feel and how it makes you feel. George, you, that's... Bad. That's fantastic. Also, you know, guys, remember, AM cards is a great way to uh, have some um, cards that can go out and, and, and you can send brownies. People love the brownies. Um, anytime you want to send me a card, send me the brownies as well, please. Um, but, but, but here's the thing. When, when you're touching, if, if I said to George, hey, George, I have a $500,000 listing opportunity for you in Dr. Phillips. Um, and they're already committed to paying a full 6% commission. I already negotiated all that. They're not going down to four or 5%. And I would like a 30% referral. George, would you, would you be okay with that? Oh, heck yeah. Of okay. Course. So that's $15,000 commission, um, a 30% referral. That's $4,500, right? That's $4,500 I earned by sending that referral to George. And George actually paid $4,500 for that referral. Okay, I want you to think about this. If you have 30 sales, 20 sales, whatever it may be, and you're willing to pay a 30% real uh, referral for a $500,000 listing, guys, those are referrals free referral opportunities right there in your database, right there in your past 18 months, two years of 24 uh, months of sales. If you're not reaching out to them, right? Why don't you just pay someone a thousand dollars during the holiday season to say, hey, I'm reaching out in behalf of Tom, whatever. It's not the same though. It's not the same. Do it. $4,500 I just earned from George Philback from a referral and he paid it. Now, if he calls every one of his database or he sets a budget of maybe $1,000 and gives out cards, uh, a, 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 you know, appreciation party, something like that there. Guys, look at the cost, weigh it up. I don't understand why someone's willing to pay 30% referral all the time and sit there and wait for a lead to come in versus going to get their database, which they've worked all these years for. Holiday season is the best time. And that's why, that's why I sent Curtis a message. I was like, holiday season, reaching out to database and past clients is, is such a superb opportunity. You know? And then he brought up the diagnose your business. Well, you're, you're right. It's the easiest time. There's so much to talk about. And I think we tend to overthink it. We're like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm going to say. And I don't know what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter. Just, I loved what George said. That That's what I always did. You know, when you always got that phone number or that person in your database, you're like, oh, man, I haven't talked to this guy in like three years. I use George's script. Hey, man, I don't, you know, sorry, I haven't been great keeping in touch, blah, 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 and just go from there. They're like, oh, it's so good. I'm so glad you called me, blah, blah, blah. Like, they don't even care, right? Once, you just connect. Who like, wants oh, to no, see a live true. call? But there you who go. Wants, who wants a live call right now? Me. Do it. All right, hold on. I'm going to call Matt Palladoro. Don't say anything. What's his phone number? Is he a, a mega don't, agent? Don't say anything. Shh. Don't, don't say anything.
Hello, George. Well, look at that. You answered, man. I was just thinking about you. It's like Thanksgiving coming around. And I'm like, you know what? I need to give Matt a call. I haven't been a good friend. I let business get in the way. How are you doing? How's your family? Uh, I'm okay. Um, we, uh, Oh, George left. Tom, George so left. This, <laughs> it might be, you never know what the call can be. Sorry, uh, uh, he has a family issue that he was just sharing with me, and that's not something yeah. I'm going to share. So yeah. I wanted you to know. See, I understand. Gonna, this is the conversation. I'm having this one. Good luck. Yeah. So you never know the call that you're going to make. Gosh, it may be changing somebody's life for the day. You, do you know, uh, so when you think of Michael Phelps, right, what do you think of? Swimming. Swimming, gold medals, uh, relentless athlete. Oh, relent really big uh, years. What's that? He's got really big ears. He's got big ears. You know what? And that stops him from getting the extra speed, right? So if he just tapered him back, it would help out maybe, like mine. Um, but here's what, here's what most people don't know. He was sitting in his house one day ready to commit suicide. He, from battling depression and not being able to live up to a standard that he thought he had to live at, he got one phone call and changed everything for him. Now, now he's drug and alcohol free and he gets the help that he needs and he's a huge advocate. I want you to think about that for a minute. Why are we not reaching out to our database and the people that we love and care about that also help us grow our business? We never know. Now, George made that call. I'm going to assume that him calling them is going to really kind of make a reflection on their day because they're battling with something. We are at the holidays. It is the best time for some and the worst time for others. What can, can I you share do? and compound on that, Tom? What's that? Can I share and compound on that? Absolutely. Uh, listen, anytime that Cl Claire wants to uh, talk, I'm just going to shut up and listen. Curtis and Tom, thank you for being here. And, and to bounce off of what you both have said, my mindset in contacting people is like this. How selfish and prideful is it of me to be scared to pick up the phone when it's my gift to pour into somebody else's life? Because I may be the only good news or smile or love that that person feels for that day. Okay? It's real. Holidays, seasonal you know, depression and things of that nature. Sometimes you just need to have that call that says they love you. So how prideful and selfish is it of me as a business person not to be compassionate to everyone who has poured into my business and my family? Just saying. I love that. And, you know, you see, you're coming from a different place. See, we're so, when we talk about database or we bring up database, we're attached to the outcome of these phone calls. Like we think we're supposed to ask referrals and do all the things. You don't have to do any of that. Just do what Claire said. I love that. Thank you. You, you know, and, and uh, um, you, you, just exactly what Claire said. And, and to piggyback up on that, why not call and just say, hey, Claire, I just wanted to give you a quick call and thank you for being part of my success this year. Without you, I wouldn't be where I am today this, this year in business. I want to say thank you for that. And I appreciate you. By the way, how is everything with you? How, you know, are you doing anything special this year? Why not call them and, and thank them for participating in your success this year? George and I were on a call at 6.30 this morning. And I was saying to him, I, I was talking to a couple agents that are so ego driven. They sell 10 homes. They, they, they get 3 million in uh, sales. They make 80 grand net whatever it is right and they don't work that hard and they're making 70 80 grand whatever you know how much it used to you know how many deals we had to sell to earn that much money 20 years ago and by the way the cost of living wasn't much different than it is as it is today mortgage rates were nine ten percent eight percent we had the average sale price was ninety five thousand dollars we had to sell 30 homes to be just like that 10 home salesperson. So if you are doing sales today, be grateful and thankful 
for the people that did it before you to help you get to where you are today. And that is the consumer. That is the buyer. That is the seller. They are literally paying you on a $300,000 home, eight to $9,000 in commission. And you should be thanking them at the end of the year for your success on that, that sale. Yeah. So part of the conversation. So, so what we were doing in business planning, Tom, and I'm sure you guys did this too. So then knowing, um, you know, where all this business came from and so on and so forth. And again, we're going to continue to um, purchase some leads and run some ads and things of that nature. But so we built strategies and systems around each of those things. And I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was doing. So Curtis, <laughs> I do the same thing. So Curtis, I want to ask you a quick question. Um, I'm your hundred million dollar team that you're coaching. I went from sixty million to a hundred million in, in, in hundred and thirty. Actually, okay, I, all right, okay. I, I know, I, dude. That's big deal. That's double. That's that's, that's massive. You're right. Yeah. So I'm sitting with you, and and you're and we're going through the business, right? We're going through. We're diagnosing all of the numbers, and. What's the one thing or two things that you see, you're, you're the coach, so you, you have the blinders for them, right? What's the one or two things that that $130 million producer does so well that the $10 million producer doesn't do so well? Great question. Um... Uh, listen, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you they get up lead generate every single day. I'm not. I'm not because they don't. But here's what they do do. They keep they keep putting it in their pipeline. So while they're not necessarily getting up and making phone calls for two hours every single freaking day, they don't do that. But they're definitely making sure that they're still putting people in their pipeline. So they are lead generating enough that they're just they keep them bringing them in, bringing them in and bringing them in. And they're doing all the things, right? So um, they're not doing that well with their database. That was, we spent so much time talking about that because the team leader of that particular team is like, yeah, we, we suck at that. We're going to get better next year and do better with that. Um, but they're doing all the thing, the other things, right? The circle prospecting, the this, that. They're, they're just, they're not doing it consistently, but they're doing it enough that they're just constantly feeding their pipeline as, as much as they possibly can. If that makes any sense. Does that, yeah. You get what it, I mean? Yeah. And, 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 I, and I can, I can definitely, I think you would agree to this. So they're always looking to build their pipeline. All the agents that I coach, I always ask them, okay, what do you got closing in January? They go, wait a minute, we're in November. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What's in the pipeline yeah. for January? You don't want to go, yeah. oh, where am I closing in November? No, you want December, January, and February pipeline starting to be filled. So are you yeah. focusing ahead? Because um, that's and- what happens, Tom. So, Tom, I watched, a, I watched um, uh, I'll share it with you, but there's a video that Jeb Blount did. And if you know who Jeb Blount is, he wrote the book, Fanatical Prospecting. Amazing. And he did a video. And, and he says that's where most salespeople fail is that they're constantly not feeding their pipeline. So, and what he meant by that was, well, they wake up and they nurture those that are already in their pipeline. So, you know, hey, I'm just calling to check in with you and see how to, they do all that and they stop feeding that pipeline constantly. And that's why they ride the roller coaster up, down, up, down, up, down. I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm rich, I'm poor, I'm rich, I'm poor. That's exactly why, because they get busy with that which is in their pipeline and they just stop feeding. And so they go through the cycle and they ride that roller coaster. They ride that roller coaster. So you got to figure that out for you, whoever, whatever that looks like and make certain that you've got, especially in this market, because I can sit down with probably most of us and, and say, Hey, what's in your pipeline. And you say, well, I got, you know, 20, 30 people in your pipeline. Yeah, you might but you've probably only got a few that you could sell a house to tomorrow, right? Because the inventory that they're looking for may or may not exist. Or even if they were hot, you're dealing with five, six, seven, eight multiple offers that you got to beat. So right now is the most important time that you've got to have as many flipping people in your pipeline as possible. And that includes sellers too. So having the conversation about, you know, 
Are you looking to sell? Have you considered selling? We as real estate agents, we want that right now business. I get it. So with sellers, we kind of give up on them. But what about building our listing pipeline for the year? You know what? I'm not a seller today, but I am in six months. Well, now you got a lead. Now you got a, a, a listing in six months. Awesome. What if you had like five or six of those for next year? Awesome. Right. So we got to build both of those pipelines, the buyer and the seller. And we just got to keep keep doing it. Right. And we got to get really strong with our our follow up. But we've got to continue to build our pipeline. Massive amounts, massive amounts of of people that we're talking about or talking to. I've got one buyer's agent. She'll do. I think she's going to do, I don't know, 48 units or something like that and that's one of the people that's just you know focusing and, and if you look at it most of our goals aren't even that big right so we say well i want to make a couple hundred grand well if you're like us over here in sarasota your average sales price went up make a couple hundred grand means i only got to sell two houses or 20 houses right like we're not looking for 50 to 100 deals we only need 20 we only need 20 but you need a massive amount of leads to do that well, and, and, and I think I think something happens, uh, Curtis, when people focus on volume versus units, because the units is what creates the activities to get the volume. Right. Right. Most people, if they focus on the volume and the, and the net income, they they end up going into a slump because what if the market shifts? What if this happens? What if that happens? There's always those things. So if you can set a goal on how many transactions or units close, that'll create the activities to do to achieve that versus the income. So I have a friend that sold a house and her her goal for the year was to uh, earn 75,000. She sold a house and it, the commission was 110,000. Okay. So she reached her goal from one sale. Does she quit for the rest of the year? No, you got to keep going because the pipeline, you got to keep building it. And what better way than to get it when people are in the right mindset, they're the Thanksgiving is one of the best holidays of the year to get people love family gatherings. There's no stress. They're buying a turkey, right? They're buying a turkey and sides and people are coming together to enjoy a dinner, right? So what better time than to reach out to that database? And by the way, Jeff Blount was an actual agent in California who did the activities and fanatical prospect and, and no was not, and, and he, he, he was a fanatical prospector until he built it, so until he didn't have to do it anymore. So do it so much that you don't have to have to do it again. And here's what we're talking about is what Curtis brought. Pipeline, where did your sales come from? Build that pipeline, build the database, touch, love on them, right? Right now is prime time to reach out to your entire database and your past sales. You know, I mean, I, I, I still say pies are the best way. All the last 12 sales that you've had, just buy a pie for each one of them, just go hand deliver it. And a Pump free, pie, free can of whipped cream money. for a referral. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, here's the whipped cream. I need a referral. Give me three referrals, or you don't get this can. No, uh, whatever it, is, whatever it is. Um, I think I actually heard you, of somebody doing that. That's, that's awesome. I, said I love that. that. And if you go to uh, Am Cards, maybe I need to call Curtis uh, Lucy and say, "Hey, you need to add pies for the delivery for this time of year." Yeah. So if you have Am Cards, he, you can send for credit. anything. Huh? He's game for anything. Yeah, I'm going to text him right now on that. But anyway, um, I heard a lot of great things today. You know, diagnose where your business came from, touch base with them, build that pipeline. Fanatical Prospect, and it's a great book. I know if Red is on this call, he probably put that on his list as well, if I hadn't mentioned it before. Um, interaction. Ahas. Um, I'm not dressing up as Santa and knocking on doors, Lizette. No, that's that's a good way to touch people. Like, I have an aha, Tom. Go ahead. You're getting dressed to Santa touching people, you gotta reword that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, something that you, I want to touch on something that you said before. Who are we talking to? Um, head number one or head number two? Head number head number one. Um, uh, yeah. First of all, I apologize. That I didn't realize I was on. Um, 
and uh, happy Veterans Day to those who, who have served. So thank you, brothers and sisters. Um, That's tomorrow. Uh, what, uh, what I just wanted to say was, we were talking about database and, and reaching out. You don't need a reason to reach out. You don't have to look. When you reach out, you shouldn't be reaching out for the referral. You shouldn't be reaching out for the business. You should be reaching out for the relationship. So I, I just wanted to, to, to underline that, reiterate that. It's not about the business. You're not, you're not, odds are you're not going to get business. But you want to stay top of mind and you want to be part of the relationship so that it's a lot easier to get the, to get the listing, to get the, the buyer, to get whatever it is that you're looking for, the referral. Please. Did you just, just, see, what, did you just see what George just posted? Did I? Yeah. Take a look Stop at it, it right now. Remember, he made that call. He hadn't talked to that person in a while. I'm sure there was something personal there, but he just told, and this is what George put, he just told me about his father who was going to sell. That call just got a referral. Now, who knows what the reason is behind it. He made a call right in front of you guys. It sounded like it got personal. And now his father wants to sell. Love it. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. See, see, so it's about the relationship. And George was honest on his phone call, right? He said, I, I've been a bad friend. I let business <laughs> get in the way. You know, and, and it takes when you when you admit that you're wrong to anybody, it takes them off guard because nobody expects anybody to to to, to just throw down their sword and be like, ah, it was me. That's right. Right. So you, you immediately become you you immediately become defenseless on your own and and you and, and you make them defenseless and they open up right away mm -hmm. it's that's just psychology so that call is going to spawn a couple of different things it's given me a reason obviously to follow up with him but there's a there's a note that'll go out because i sold them their house so i know where they live and i'll write him a note it says great talking to you i'm really sorry to hear about your father his father fell down and we're, he's going to have to be put into uh, um, uh, more of a, a home that will allow him to con convalesce better and, and the house is a little too much for him to manage. Um, so it, it's, of course, there's a, a comment, a reply back on that, the honoring that he shared that with me. And going into Christmas, I'm pretty sure, and I actually put it down in my notes, that I want to make sure I do something for his father. So I need to find out what his father's favorite food is that we can make sure he gets in his new place as a way of honoring my friendship. And you're right, Jonathan, it's all about coming from well, being authentic, being real and being caring, but great things will happen. And you guys don't forget, and I missed a lot of the call. The people that are in your relationship that are in relationship with you already, they love you. They think you're awesome. And sometimes you just need to give them an opportunity to know that you love them too, and that they're awesome. It's the best possible business you can be in, in the business of relationships. So Jonathan, thanks for your, your comments. I appreciate it. Yeah. George, you know what? So, so I, I just wanted to say something. So, cause, cause one of the things that I had, we were, we talked about, I did business planning, all this other fun stuff, but um, one of the questions my coach asked me and, and I turned around and asked the teams that I coach and stuff like that during business planning is I says, our strategy with the sphere and with our database and stuff like that, these people, he says, he says, ask the question. And so I had them ask themselves this question so that they could then go build a plan around it. And it was, how do I continue? Look, you just sold them a house or, or whatever, right? You sold their house or you helped them buy one or whatever. And you got nine grand, 10 grand, 15, 20, 30 grand, whatever. How do I continue to add value to them after the transaction? Right. And then go build your plan around that. Does that make sense with staying in touch with them? make sense and so it could be phone calls it could you know it could be a number of things but how do i you just earned a commission and we know that them in our database and me continuing to communicate with them and so on and so forth that they could be worth so much more right because of referrals and repeat business and all this sort of stuff but how do i continue to add value to them after that transaction actually takes place and go build your system or plan around that. Hey, Curtis, um, Elizabeth Riley has a system that she uses that she touches each client that she's done business with 36 times a year. Nice. Three touches, three touches a month. She puts them into a system and, and, and it's exactly what you were just saying. So 
uh, once you develop that system, how many times are you going to touch them? How are you going to touch them? Is it all phone calls? Is it phone call, email, text message? Is it, you know, personal handwritten letter, email, and a phone call? Is it a text? You know, you have to figure out what works best for you. And um, I, I, I took some of that, what she said. I took some of what George does, where you put a number attached to everybody, uh, you know, put them in your database. They call them up on that day. Um, it seems to be working fairly well right now. So um, I just want to throw that out there that, that you, you have to have the system in play before you start putting your people together. Otherwise, you're going to be lost. Got to say and, something, Jonathan. And, and let me will, jump in. Jonathan, let me jump in real quick. Chain. Go ahead. Folks, for everybody here, if you go into the uh, if you go into GPS Global Partners and into the, the classes and links, there's an entire thing on database on how to do that. And it's what Jonathan was just speaking about. And it is a great foundational start. It is, of course, uh, once a month, a phone call, a text, uh, some form of back and forth communication. Uh, a private message on Facebook is a great way in which to do so, where you're engaging with them about them. Once a month, if, you, if you're reaching out to them, you're having these conversations about them, you're focusing on them because they're the most important person in the world to themselves. If you're focusing on that, you can then have the permission at some point uh, and it'll become more and more where your click will, your click through rate will be increased greatly. Once a month, an update from you guys. And this is just a quick overview. This is uh, it, what Jackie and I send out is Jackie and George's monthly update. There are three bullets and a video. The bullets talk about what we talk about in the video. The video is done through KV Corp. The video is no more than 90 seconds, and it just talks about what's happening in our world. Now, the reason they'll open it is because you're interested in their world, and it may not be opened right away, but every after you do this for a couple of months, they'll start opening it a lot more. Like we have 84 people or 87 people we sent this out to when we're going to Italy. We had 26 people send back suggestions for us on where to go. That's an amazing click-through rate and a response rate. It's incredible. You can also, you have that ability to do so. It also talks about once a, once a month sending out a just sold postcard. It looks something very similar to this. And actually, the template for it is already there. And all it says is I sold a home. And if you don't have a home that you sold, then send out a just sold postcard and put the nomenclature, which is in there that says we just sold a home because we are partners. Borrow mine, borrow Tom's, borrow uh, Natasha's, borrow any, hi, Natasha, borrow anybody's. Because we are business partners and every month you want to say, I am in, I am successful. Not in our conversations because our conversations, quite honestly, they're about them in a relationship. But you do have to send something that shows validity of success. And if you start tagging people better where you know an interest of theirs, great, have at it. I'd also suggest, and, and this is in there as well, that maybe you divide your people into groups of 10 people. If you've got 80 people, you've got eight groups of 10. And on the third Thursday of every single month, have a micro party with 10 of these people and invite them together and say, let's get together. And, and, and it's not them showing up. Your lender will pay for it. It's not them showing up. It's the conversations before they get there. It's the introductions and that two hours where you're being social with them about them. Your lender's there. Of course, he's a friend. He's sponsoring it or she's a friend sponsoring it. You're having meaningful relationship conversations. But more important than anything is the three things that happened before, the phone call, the email, the text message about the event and the invite. And if they don't show up, that's cool. Then it's a phone call, a text, and an email afterward about how awesome it was. And take some pictures and put it on Facebook and tag everybody you invited. You, I want you to meet my friends. There's some people that you'd really want to meet. That is about 55 contacts a year. That will incredibly explode your business. And it's systematic and you can do it easily in about 30 minutes a day. Boom. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Are you dropping the mic? That's I Actually, you know what? Hey. Mic drop. <laughs> He had a mic. That's funny. I do have. Of course I do. <laughs> hey, so you know what? I, I just real quick to Jonathan's point. Jonathan mentioned uh, someone he knows does a 36 touch and so on and so forth. You know, we know what the statistics are with the 36 touch. So if you have a database and you have people on a 36 touch, what that return could be. And it's 10 to one. Right. So it's one deal for every 10 people in my database. If they're on a 36 touch. And I'm touching them and talking to them and whatever else over the course of a year. It's 10 to 1. Most of our goals, if you think about it, 
most of our goals, like I said, we want to make 200 grand or whatever. We probably only need to sell 20 houses. But if we looked in our telephone or looked in our database, we probably have like 300 people in there. So if I put those 300 people on a 36 touch at a 10 to one ratio, that's 30 deals. I was like, that, that more, I was only looking for 20, <laughs> but that's 30, right? So I love that you have one already spelled out. You should, uh, I'd be all over that thing because it's just about having a system and working a system. Yeah, yeah. That's, right? Curtis, that's exactly what it is. If there's something, if you, if you overthink it, it probably doesn't get done. If there's a system where you do it, like today is the, uh, what is the date today? It's the 10th, right? Today's the 10th. So in 10. my, in KV core, uh, hashtag 10 COI, I call, uh, I have four people. I think I need to call on that. I'm actually, I'll pull it up so we can see it. Uh, but that's this. So it's, I don't even think about it. I just know that I got to call them and I'm going to have a conversation all about them. I'll of course look on social media. So I have some background in there. I keep notes on the conversation. And by the way, KV core on your phone, best communication device I've ever seen. Cause I'll pull them up and then I'll just write the notes in after I'm done. And, and I'll carry on. And, and folks, you got to consider that this is your business. Let's run it like a business, which is systems and procedures. There are things that have to be done. Doesn't mean it's impersonal. It means that we do things on purpose. And the on purpose is caring about our people and letting them know that. Here's a note. I literally have my family in KV Core, so I don't forget to call them and let them know they're important to me. That's how pathetic I am. It's true, though. My aunt is the 25th. I know that. That's when I call her. And they never, by the way, know that it's the same day every month. And if they do, move it. Okay? Just keep it in mind, guys. It's This is your business. You can build it. And this is the time to do it. These are the best months for communication with your database. You have reason for the call. Every one of us does. Start the systems now. We're going to be covering this in two weeks, three weeks. It is all about database. And I'm actually working on redoing it so it's easier. And that'll be the class three weeks from Tuesday or something like that. We'll let you know. Cool. All got. <laughs> hey, guys, can I say something? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Krista. So I wanted to let you know, I do um, reminder media magazines. Um, it, not many. I do 60 every two months. So that's um, only, you know, every every six, mo uh, six months. Uh, campaign and I got I was looking at my numbers right now and out of those 60 I got five transactions this year um, so that was that's a huge uh, and, and it's just a magazine and in the back I always um, do my sales so you know it's a, it's a nice touch and they keep it they don't throw it away like they would do a postcard but uh, I thought that was amazing and I've been doing it for two years to my top 60 people um, and now that I've had more transactions, obviously I'm going to add more to it, but that's a huge SOI. And then I'm doing a client appreciation party on Friday. Um, we have 30 people coming and I'm kind of freaking out because I didn't know there were going to be that many, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, everybody's coming. Everybody's excited. So that's awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm excited to touch people every, you know, at the end of the year. Awesome. That's it. George? Yes, sir. My time is up. Yeah, well, as, as is mine, because this is at, at, at 9.30, <laughs> I start prospecting. And I know you got another appointment. Folks, well, first off, Curtis, thank you very, very much. Tom is, I think, on a call already. I know he's got some appointments he's taking care of. Brother, we greatly appreciate both you and, of course, uh, your coaching partner, Debbie. You guys have just come from contribution. We're so grateful. Thank you for everything, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure and um, certainly an honor and a pleasure on our parts. We love it anytime. Uh, Appreciate you, my day. friend. We'll talk soon. Bye. Thank, Bye you, Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, George and Tom. Thank you. Great call. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Curtis. All right. So uh, I'm going to finish this.